directly just pointing at the file and it makes a nice looking volcano plot. So it just saved it as volcano zero. It would save the next one as volcano one. Well, if you're anything like me, you get asked to make a volcano plot at least three times a week. Or maybe you just want to make a pretty volcano plot as simple as possible. I actually created my own package. There are other packages available, but I find they don't make aesthetically pleasing volcanoes. So you can install a package like this right into your Jupyter Notebook, but you can do this through the command line too. You don't actually need Jupyter Notebook. I tried to make this as simple as possible. So we can go ahead and import volcano from sambomix.plots. Volcano is the only thing in there right now. I'm going to add some more in the future. And then within my current directory, I have dseq output, which is just the results from a dseq experiment. So all the default parameters in volcano are based on dseq output. So we can just run this directly, just pointing at the file, and it makes a nice looking volcano plot with the top 10 genes labeled. You don't even have to use Jupyter Notebook if you don't want to. You could just save and either pass true or a prefix, and it'll just save it to your current directory. So you can do this all from just running Python in command line with just one line. So super simple to make a basic volcano plot, but I also made it very customizable. And it also works with pandas data frames as well. And if you don't have dseq output with the columns labeled as the same default, I'll get into that in just a second. But let's go ahead and load in pandas. And then let's read that data frame instead. So for the default volcano function to work, like I showed above, you need a log twofold change column, a symbol column, and a p adjusted column. So again, we can just pass the data frame instead of the path to the file, and it works just the same. Like I said, if you did have different column names, these are the parameters that you might change. So just change these to the actual column names in your CSV or your data frame. So let's get to some of these simple customizations. Let's say you didn't want to label the top 10 genes. Let's say you only wanted to label the top four or two in the downregulated and two in the upregulated. Let's say instead of having it pick the genes for you, you wanted to pick your own gene set to label. You can just pass a list instead of a number here. So I just went ahead and picked four genes. So you can label any genes you want just by passing a list. And then let's say we didn't want these default thresholds here. So a log fold change of 0.75 and a p-value of 0.05. We can easily change those. I also made it so we can change the colors and the shapes of any dots we want. So I'm just going to use random instead of picking gene sets. You could do this with go terms or specific gene sets that interest you or whatever you want. I'm just going to make three random sets or lists of genes. So A, B, and C are just random lists of 400 genes. And let's say we wanted to color the dots that correspond to these genes. So we pass a label, this could be whatever you wanted, and then the list of genes. So you see, we now have these labeled genes based on these three different lists. And then let's just make two new lists, E and F, and I'm just gonna pass this to shape dictionary, and it's just another dictionary. And now you see we have triangles and squares based on those gene lists. So this is getting pretty complicated because likely you won't have this many gene sets, but you might. It's highly flexible. I think you can do like 15 different colors and like 10 different shapes. And you can also specify the colors and shapes if you just look at the signature of the function and shows you how. And then if we wanted to size the points based on their mean expression, we can do that too. Again, this is just the column name, base mean, which is just base mean. And it's going to get the log value for that and plot that. So now you see we have different sized shapes based on the mean expression of any of these genes. And like I said, we can look at the signature here and it shows you the defaults and you can change almost everything else, like even the legend location. And importantly, we can save it too. So we can just take this and if we pass save, I can either pass true and it just does a default name for you. So it just saved it as volcano zero. It would save it the next one as volcano one. 
And these might be too bulky. You can also change the big size. Say we wanted a really small one. It might be a little cramped, we'll see. Yeah, it's definitely a little too small, but you get the point. But anyway, let me fix that. Five is the default. So again, super simple. And I'm going to be adding more plotting functions in the future to this Sambomix package and some other tools like for converting ensemble IDs to gene symbols, etc.